Brendan O'Neill, uh, the editor of Spiked Online, says the US broadcaster HBO are Philistine buffoons for putting a trigger warning on the Mal Brooks classic. It's a three-minute intro, putting the film into what they call social context. It's just like what they did with Gone with the Wind. But Brendan says it's a patronising spoiler, and HBO are committing a crime against culture. He joins me now. Brendan, you're very worked up about this. I can understand why. I can understand why, because you make the point that, in fact, anyone who watches the film would understand exactly what the filmmakers were trying to do without this patronising three-minute lecture before you have to watch it. And by the way, it gives away lots of the plot. That's exactly right. And the reason I'm worked up about this is because Blazing Saddles is one of my favourite films. It is absolutely brilliant. It is hilarious. It is a satire on racism. And I, I am very much of the opinion that anyone who has ever watched it, which is millions upon millions of people, will know very well that it is a satire on racism. So the fact that it contains the N-word, the fact that it contains um, uh, examples of racist abuse because a black sheriff moves into a town in the 80, 1870s and encounters lots of racist abuse, that is absolutely essential to Mel Brooks sending up off the racist worldview, the stupidity of looking down your nose at black people and all those other things. So for HBO to slap on this boring, worthy three minute introduction informing us of why these words are used in the film, I just think is patronizing and ridiculous. And it is all part of this ongoing war against our culture. I mean, I, I like the point you made in your column for Spiked Online where you said, what's next? Is there going to be a warning on the slavery uh, film, the Oscar-winning slavery film, 12 Years a Slave, telling viewers that the bad guys are the slave owners who use the N-word? I mean, surely the whole point is you watch the film and you work it out for yourself. It's just impossible to know where this is going to go next. I mean, trigger warnings have been a, a part of university life for a long time. I mean, some English literature students have demand trigger warnings on Shakespeare plays if they contain scenes of rape or scenes of violence, for example. Um, you know, archaeology students at a London university were given a trigger warning telling them that their course might involve looking at dead people's bones and, and uh, uh, ancient uh, artifacts and so ridiculous. on. You know, it, it's so ridiculous because what this trigger warning culture does, it really says to people all the time, this culture might harm you, this book might harm you, this film might harm you, therefore you should approach with caution, be very careful, don't throw yourself into culture, don't watch this film without having a three minute introduction from a professor of media studies and it presents ordinary people People as vulnerable and gullible and and liable to be corrupted by culture and it presents culture as this dangerous thing that is you know it's a risky business to watch this movie so I think the trigger warning phenomenon is really destructive of the whole point of culture which is that it's fun it's entertaining it's uplifting and we should be able to approach it in a free way you're so right and I, I I'm so worried about the way that all of the films that we grew up with and that we loved are going to start to be targeted mm -hmm. I mean I think about my three favorite films Brendan you won't be surprised to know they're all musicals right so <laughs> and, and they are all starting to come under attack Greece will then mm. have a trigger warning about tos toxic masculinity <laughs> and the bloke that asked uh, Danny Zuko if Sandy put up a fight in that classic song Wizard of Oz blackface warning yeah. maybe for the scarecrow yeah. and the sound of music glamorizes a nazi soldier i mean we could put trigger warnings on every single classic film and all you're doing is taking away actually the joy and love that comes from historic films partly by the way so that we learn about how society has changed and sometimes how far we've come Exactly right. You know, there is a war on old culture. There is a war on old movies. It's very Orwellian. It is like 1984, where we are going back in time and we are either rewriting things or putting, um, you know, yellow tape around them saying, you know, warning, this is a dangerous piece of culture. It is so ridiculous and it's so destructive. And, you know, we've also seen millennials, you know, young, active, woke millennials complaining about um, friends, the, the sitcom friends or 
course, Sex and the City, you know, Sex and the City was not always politically correct about transgender people, for example, or about um, homosexual relationships. It used un-PC language, it used colourful language, and that was not particularly a long time ago, but, you know, things change so fast now that people are offended when they watch those old films and those old TV shows. It, it, there's this uber sensitivity that people are encouraged to feel all the time now they're encouraged to take offense they're encouraged to feel wounded by words they're encouraged to believe that culture could cause them great harm and that's i think is just a very depressing way to view the world we should actually encourage people to watch all of these things because they're all wonderful examples of human culture and they'll either like them or they won't like them but they should be left alone to do that it is quite fascinating, though, the snowflake culture and, and what they get offended by, because they're not offended by their pin-up Cardi B, uh, who had a meeting <laughs> uh, with Joe Biden, the Democratic presidential nominee this week, despite the fact she's been very open about celebrating and glamorising the way that she drugged men in order to mm. steal from them. Uh, she hasn't been cancelled for that, and that's something that she said last year. It's it's really hard to know. I mean, I mean all sorts of people are cancelled, and cancel culture is out of control. But you're right; there is a hypocrisy. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying well. Cardi B should be cancelled. No, but I'm just saying <laughs> right. that the, uh, that the, the hypocrisy over what is allowed to yes. be said by certain pinups. I mean, she's a feminist right. pinup, Cardi B. It's, there's a double standard. I mean, my view of Cardi B, I think Cardi B is hilarious and I think she contributes something interesting to popular culture. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. There is a hypocrisy to this and some people will be let off the hook for doing things that other people, usually, you know, older white men, would be completely destroyed for doing or completely destroyed for saying. So there is a hypocrisy. But I think the key problem with a snowflake culture is as the word snowflake suggests, it encourages people to see themselves as really weak and to see um, ideas as something dangerous. And what that gives rise to is a deeply censorious culture where freedom is just completely trampled underfoot. And, you know, it, it's the, the real problem is not so much that we're going back in time and slapping trigger warnings on, on uh, blazing saddles and gone with the wind and everything else. It's the question of what kind of culture will be created today. If we are churning out this new generation who are super cautious and super fragile, they are not going to make those great movies. They're not going to make those risky movies or write those risky books. So I think in the future, we're going to have a really bland cultural sphere because we've educated everyone to be scared of ever feeling any kind of offence. And that's the real problem. Yeah, everyone's too terrified. Everyone is too terrified. Mm -hmm. Would be fascinating to see, wouldn't it, Brendan, though, how many people actually sit through that three-minute trigger warning. I imagine. <laughs> Imagine if you want to see Blazing Saddles, you are immediately hitting the fast forward. It was a fascinating column as ever. Brendan O'Neill, editor of Spiked Online, thank you so much for being here.